25 years ago, um, in many ways, we were America today. 2019 is a lot like 1994 in California. And it's just an interesting fact, you know, this idea of a majority minority state, the capacity to live together and advance together across every conceivable difference. It's just an extraordinary thing that we are part of, this journey that is California, in the spirit of John's introduction, this remarkable place that attaches itself to a dream. There's no other state in America that attaches itself to a dream. There's the American dream and the California dream. There's no Alabama dream. I say lovingly to the press, I, I don't want to get in trouble in Alabama. Uh, I, I know Michael Bloomberg would have never said that. But, <laughs> but it's true. American dream and the California dream. You know, there's a word we don't use often enough, and that's pluralism. We practice pluralism. We are a universal state, the most diverse state in the world's most diverse democracy. And I don't think it's an exaggeration at all when John talks about traveling the world, that the world looks to us to see that it's possible to live, advance, and prosper together across every conceivable difference. It's what makes this state great, that we don't tolerate that diversity as we once had, but we truly can look today and talk in terms of how we celebrate that diversity. And that is a remarkable thing, and that is a predicate for everything else. That's the foundation to which everything else is built. This capacity to put aside our differences. The biggest issue today is how damn divided we are. Left, right, rural, urban, rich, poor, educated, uneducated. Now politics has become war. Life almost seems to be about conflict. Enemy, friend. Us versus them. And then you travel the state. You, know, you spend time in communities in Sanger, Ceres, and Monterey Track Park. Not just the big cities like Fresno, Bakersfield, and Merced. And you start to realize everybody. <laughs> That's right, Ashley. <laughs> I know. And you start to realize there's some universal truths. Everybody wants to be protected. Everybody wants to be respected. And everyone wants to be connected in some way, shape, or form. That's what we all share, no matter where we come from, any part of this state, but any part of this globe. We all love our children. Most of us love our work. We love our sense of place, our community. And in our quiet moments, we also recognize our common humanity. You know, something I learned from Father Cause. The Bible teaches us that we're many parts but one body. And when one part suffers, we all suffer. You know, wasn't that the spirit of Dr. King? We're all bound together by a web of mutuality. There's no leak on your side of our boat. Right? We rise and fall together. This notion of interdependence, this commonwealth, that is this remarkable place we call home, 40 million strong. And I say 40 million strong because with all due respect to the pundits, and some folks and some news networks, <laughs> you know, eat your heart out, Texas, <laughs> Tennessee and Florida. This is California. I, I just want to brag a little. When we had this conference eight years ago, we were just coming out of that historic recession. We had 12.2% unemployment at peak. We had those $27 billion deficits Governor Brown had inherited, $34.7 billion in that wall of debt. We were financing our general fund deficits with bonds. You had a candidate for president at the time by the name Mitt Romney who was out here saying that California was going the way of Greece. And a lot of you privately were probably wondering the same. People talking about the best days being behind us. There's no capacity, they said, this state to be governed. In fact, there were folks coming to this conference saying we need to split this state up into six. There 
was a lot of anxiety, a lot of fear. Let's talk about that journey we've all been on in the last eight years. 115 consecutive months, a record of net job growth in the state of California. <laughs> Those deficits have put way to historic budget surpluses, a surplus last year north of $21 billion. We have averaged over five years 3.8% GDP growth. Eat your heart out, Donald Trump. The country has come nowhere near close to what we have in our GDP growth. I don't know why we don't talk about this more. The lowest unemployment in California history, record surpluses, paid down 100% of that debt we inherited. This legislature, progressive leaders, you know what they wanted to prioritize this year? Paying down long-term obligations, $9 billion commitment over the next three years to pay down pension obligations and unfunded liabilities. Find me a red state, let alone a blue state, that uses surplus money to pay down pension <laughs> obligations. That's California. I don't know why I don't read about this stuff. I'm proud of this state. I was reading the other day, they said, well, all those U-Haul trucks all going to Tennessee and Texas. This mass exodus of folks leaving California. Silicon Valley is finished. <laughs> the new numbers just came in. We actually outperformed the previous decade in venture capital investment in this last decade. 51% of the nation's investment coming into the state of California. The previous decade, which was a record you all celebrating, was only 47%. We lead the nation still in startups, not just business investments, more Nobel laureates. More patents emanating out of this state. And the great leadership of the folks here running our institutions of higher learning, give me a break. There is no system of public higher education anywhere on planet Earth that competes with the state of California's UC, CSU, and community college system. <laughs> Nowhere. Man, I can't take it anymore. All this negativity, all that, you know, navel-gazing, hand-wringing. I get it. No one's naive. You just had a panel about the issue that defines perhaps more than any other issues, the issue of affordability, the issue that defines our time and the issue of housing. I, we get that. That's stubborn. And it was stayed, said a moment ago, and appropriately so. It took decades to get here. But you know what? I appreciated Senator Weiner's point. I've appreciated his leadership, by the way, over the years. That guy's got guts, and he's willing to step up and step into this damn debate and take the heat. But we've never been more resolved on these issues. No one's walking away from these tough fights. I think we don't notice what the hell's happening on the streets, not just of L.A. and San Francisco, but in Bakersfield and Merced and Grass Valley and other parts of the state. The ultimate manifestation of our failure, homelessness. We see that. We don't just feel that. We're not paying lip service to that. We're investing a historic amount of money and focus to address that issue in a systemic way. A historic amount of money and focus to address the issue of affordability and housing in the state. An historic amount of investment to address the issue of wealth and income inequality. But we're doing it in a way that doesn't tear other people down. We don't begrudge other people's success. We're not about redistribution, we're about pre-distribution. We're about creating opportunities and ladders and we recognize if you're gonna get serious about poverty eradication, you have to begin in the beginning. And that means prenatal care. That means focusing. <laughs> focusing zero to three, 85% of your brain is developed by the time you turn three years old. You're not serious about focusing those first three years of life, then you're not serious about addressing the rest of the one child's life. Focus the historic amount on preschool, not just Head Start, early Head Start, preparing people for kindergarten. An historic amount of investment in K through 12 education system, historic amount of investment in special education, into our educators, into quality, focus on quality and retention, historic amount of investment this year, 1.66 billion in higher education of new money this year, all while balancing our budget, all the same time living within our means, 
all with an eye on the future because none of us is naive that we're going to enjoy another 10 years of robust economic growth. I'm proud of this state. I'm proud of the energy and the vibrancy and the incredible diversity and creativity that's at play in the legislature. I, I didn't know how much I'd love this damn legislature. <laughs> you got, I, yeah, I know everyone says, oh, people in politics all for the wrong reason. They all didn't get hugs from their mother when they were kids. <laughs> and that's true for some, there's no doubt. <laughs> we got a president in the White House, clearly. Then get hugs from his dad. That's a whole nother speech. <laughs> but Tony Atkins? I mean, you don't know how good you got it. I mean, someone comes from out of state, lives the American dream, and then starts living the California dream and ascends to the leadership of the California Assembly and then to the Senate? whose purpose and passion is not politics, but policy, because her purpose and her principle is the best politics is a better damn idea. That's the only reason she's there. And the partnerships and the collaboration and the work that her colleague's doing, Anthony Rendon, his passion and purpose around early childhood education. We should be so lucky. We're working together, Republicans, not just Democrats. Ask Assemblymember Gallagher. Ask the folks up in Butte County. We didn't stop going up to Butte County because it's a red county and a Trump county. We care about those folks. We'll have their back. We'll never threaten state funding to be pulled because we don't like their politics. We're all in this together. <laughs> Californians. Proud. So, look, I, I don't want to belabor this. And <laughs> It's like a therapy session for me this morning. <laughs> I'm going to feel real good after this. <laughs> but you may not be if I continue on like this. So I, I want to respect your time. But I want to make this point. What I love about this last eight years and this journey we've been on is we've been refining. We've been iterating. And we recognize that good enough never is. And we recognize we've got to fill these gaps, not just with rhetoric, not just with lines that are predetermined applause lines, but really start to break things down into focus. I couldn't have been more proud in the transition. My first meeting we had in the transition, first formal meeting was up here in Fresno with Ashley and her team and what became of this drive coalition. And they started to break things down, not just talk in broad strokes terms about the issues, the stubborn issues of poverty and the issues of, of race that underlie some of these issues and, and those tensions, but to focus on what we do and how we amplify better behaviors, not just locally, but regionally, and begin to focus on amplifying better behaviors at the state and federal level. It is a remarkable accomplishment, all of you that participated in that drive collaboration. What you put together, that document, is as good as it gets. It is the spirit of regions rising together, and it's a template for this state. It really is. And, and, and so my commitment to you is to make it real to follow through on our commitments. We don't want to run the 90-yard dash on a lot of those proposals. We've got to be here for the long haul. Not just situationally, a sustainable mindset. That's a, a value proposition. To commit, not just to be interested in your success, but to commit to your success. To find ways to work through the good times and the bad times, the changes of leadership, to institutionalize partnerships. I care deeply about this damn valley because I care about this state. I'm so sick and tired of this notion that somehow we're living in two different worlds in this state, the coastal economy and the inland economy. I don't like hearing people talking down to folks or past folks. We not only had that first meeting in that transition, I hope you heard my, my inaugural speech. I hope you listened to my state of the state speech about this valley and its vibrancy about its diversity, and diversity of its economy as well. How proud, of course, we are of the agricultural community here, but there's something else happening out here in the inland part of the state. Look at Bitwise and the work they're doing. Look at the investments. Look at these incubators. Look at these young folks that are educating and are not leaving, but are staying and are committing themselves. The entrepreneurial spirit that's alive and well. Look at what UC Merced is doing. Look what Fresno State has done in its communities. Look at the medical investments that are happening, the medical schools and our commitment to do more and better there. It's remarkable 
We should be proud of that. Sure, there's stubborn, historic factors we have to overcome, but there's plans now, there's intentionality, there's focus, there's passion, and there's renewed action. And so I hear, I'm here just to say thank you. I'm here to compliment you. You guys are the doers, not just the dreamers. This is a remarkable, talented group of folks. I've gotten to know many of you over the course of the last eight years. You guys are not folks that just have candlelight vigils and talk about the way the world should be. You guys get out there and you manifest it. You recognize the future is not just something the damn experience, something inside of us. It's our decisions, not conditions, that determine our fate and future. That's the history of California. Decisions, not conditions, that determine our fate and future. And you always maintain a sense of idealism. Don't ever lose that. And authenticity. Because I know this, the state's vision on economic development will never be realized from Sacramento down. It's realized at the local level. That's the spirit of regions rising together. We're not one economy. We are the cross-section of literally a dozen plus economies in the state of California. We have to build on those strengths. We have to reconcile those weaknesses. We have to do what you have been doing, and that's sharing best practices. Spread what is working. Reconcile the stubborn fact that some things we're doing are not working. Let's not pave over the old cow path. That was the spirit of that inaugural summit, and I'll close with that spirit. You remember we talked about eight years ago, California being at a hinge moment, economic hinge moment, demographic hinge moment, technological hinge moment. You remember the keynote then was a gentleman by the name of Tom Friedman. And Tom was still marketing that book, The World is Flat. Four and a half damn million copies he sold. I won't talk to you about how many I sold in my book. But. <laughs> and I remember Tom making the point to punctuate the new realities. And I'm going to close up. And he said, go into my book under FFA, FAC. He says, Facebook is not even my book. He said, it's a book about globalization and technology, about how the world is flat, not connected. He said, hyper-connected. It's on the New York Times bestseller list in the middle parts of the 2000s. It says, I didn't even decide to include Facebook. He said, when I wrote that book, he was saying this eight years ago, so when I wrote that book, Facebook didn't exist. Twitter was a sound. <laughs> he said the cloud was still in the sky. 4G was a parking space. <laughs> LinkedIn was a prison. <laughs> Big Data was a rap star. <laughs> Apps were things you filled out to get into Fresno State. And Skype was a typo. All those things are ubiquitous in our lives, but they didn't exist just a handful of years ago, going from something old to something new, this remarkable hinge moment with that opportunity, with that challenge, a lot of whitewater, a lot of headwind, but a lot of opportunity. And we are so well positioned to take advantage of these trend lines. No state in America better positioned to take advantage of these trend lines. As long as you continue to maintain your sense of purpose and idealism and hard-headed pragmatism. In closing, I know this, the best is yet to come in California. Thank you all very, very much.